This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. Big red letters, Alex. In the white letters, it's the Ramble, and we're on here till midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we're privileged to have with us this evening Bobby Slayton. Hello, Robert. It's been a while. You know, first of all, yeah. uh, you think you're fooling anybody with that background? It looks great. I know. But it's, yeah, terrific. It's, not... it's terrific. See, I mean, I can go, and there you go. See, it oh, really? Oh, Are you... yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it looks cool, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny because since this whole COVID thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, once it started, you know, I got a million calls. Um, and you can imagine if I was famous, how famous people must yeah, you know all these all these podcasts were contacting me they obviously contacted everybody because everybody was stuck in their home and you know and i, I can't tell you so i do all these podcasts and uh i'd see the list of people that had done them i said well if this guy did it that guy did it well sure i should do it what i have nothing else to do i'll do the podcast right exactly and I, not not one thing on facebook not one thing on twitter i don't know if anybody didn't watch it anybody doesn't give a shit nobody responded anyway the whole point was and then i realized after a while I have nothing to plug. I'm not working. What do I? I don't have a book well, out. Why are you doing? It? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah. See, there was no reason for me to do all these podcasts. But I always love the fact that almost every one of them. Hey, we're contacting comedians because we want to know what you're doing during COVID. Have you read any COVID jokes? Everything was about COVID and Trump, and I was tired of talking about COVID or Trump. Yeah. And even thinking about it. So, and then it was like, well, you can plug something, and then I again, like, I have nothing to plug. And then they always say, look, it's you'll have a lot of fun. And right there was when I said, no, I don't, I don't want to have fun. <laughs> no, we play like a little game. No, we do like a little game. We play it. It's, it's sort of like, you know, it's, it's like a little game show with comedians. We talk topical stuff. And I, I don't want to play a game. I don't want to be on your show. And my, is there a chance of me winning a car? You know, is it like, let's make a deal where I can get a, a new a refrigerator? But there's no point in me doing this. But anyway, the point being that when you called, yeah. I can't say no to Alex Bennett. No, not of course that, not. You know, you can't. No, because we go back because so far. Because if and, you and, say and, no to Alex Bennett, your career is finished. Well, maybe <laughs> I'm trying to think when I said no to you and when it was finished. I want to see if, they, if there's if, if if there's a correlation there to when it was finished and when I said no to you. I don't think I ever said no to you, but um, never said no. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I was looking through some uh, pictures the other day. You know, boxes and boxes of photographs when people use cameras, and you know, I, I I came across those shots of us on the sleigh ride in Lake Tahoe when I married my wife. The Donner, the Donner wedding, how freezing it was. And yes, the, the Don- I called it the Donner wedding party. It was, it was, it was, it was an extraordinary weekend because I know we've talked about this before, but well, when you I decided, decided to marry my you wife, decided that you wanted to get married because it was romantic in right. a, a sled out in the middle of a field right. uh, during really cold weather in Lake Tahoe. But wait, but it, yeah, but it was, and I'm not embellishing here. It was more than that. We originally wanted to get married in Paris, because I think my friend Greg Kinn had got married in Paris, and yeah. somebody said they got married under the Eiffel Tower, but the red tape that you had to go through at the time, what if you had to be in Paris for 30 days, you had to get this, and I said, you know what, it's not worth the aggravation. And I, more than the romantic idea of being in Paris and mm-hmm. under the Eiffel Tower was the fact that, you know, n- we didn't have to invite our family and friends. Oh, we'd like right. to come, but we don't want to go to Paris. Uh, yeah, okay, right, we'll exactly, you. exactly. You know, I didn't. I didn't need like China or any. Kind, I didn't need to register at Macy's for any kind of gift. So I figured we'd go there. Nobody would show up. So anyway, I was playing in Lake Tahoe at Caesar's Tahoe, mm-hmm. and right next to Caesar's was a big open field. Oh, yeah. And while I was up there for the week playing this comedy club, I decided I'll call my wife. She should come up. Oh, she was coming up anyway. We should get married. You know, she was pregnant with my daughter, and I figured, well, we might as well just get married just like we said you know it's like she said you want to have an abortion i go now let's have the baby yeah, let's get married it wasn't like we gave any of this any thought mm-hmm. so it's snowing outside i look out my window and i see this big field and they give sleigh rides and i went over and i talked to them and go yeah you can get married on a sleigh ride we fit like eight people no it was beautiful. it was bigger than that this was like a huge sleigh this could fit like about 15 uh, 16 people well I, you know what let me look at the picture yeah. I, maybe you're yeah. right i don't you know, i just saw the picture yesterday. there were a lot of people on the sled you know, getting pulled by, by two horses. So 
I, we have, I invited a few of our friends up. I invited you, of course. We invited a few people. Uh, my, my manager at the time invited herself up. A few other people invited themselves. But anyway, mm-hmm. I figured we, we, I'm doing three shows that night, but we'll get married during the day on the sleigh ride. So literally, and I'm not making this up because I went back and I looked at the weather. The day after, we should, we can get married like three days after I, I, I called everybody. Mm-hmm. So the following day, it goes from freezing out to like 75 degrees. I look out my window, and this is before anybody knew about you know global warming and climate change. This is going on back then. <laughs> this, we'll go back 35 years ago. I look at my window, and this field, there's no more snow. It's mud. You know, <laughs> it is now, it's gone from the Donnelly to Valley Forge. It's some soldiers with bayonets trudging through the dirt and the mud. Anyway, it was horrible. Everybody comes up, and I don't know how this happened, but the next day, it starts a snowstorm again. It goes from snow to 70 degrees, mud, to one of the coldest storms and freezing, icy Oh my God! And that's when we went out on that sleigh ride, and it wasn't cold. You well, you know, was, you know how bad that was, you know how cold it was. I brought a video camera to videotape right. your wedding. Right, right. My camera froze, literally right. froze. That. It would not work right. under like thirty-two degrees or something in right. those days, and it froze. And uh, I never had any video of it. Well, you got to remember that. Um, um, you know, guys like us, we're like, you know, New Yorker, Chicago people, you maybe not, you know, you, you've lived through some cold winters, so it's not like we didn't experience cold. It's not like we just flew in from Bora Bora where we grew up. You yeah. know, we knew cold, and this was mind-boggling. They did videotape it. I, I think I have a video, because I think that it was Reverend Love. That was his Reverend name. Love, yes. Love, remember that? Yes, yes. It was a love chapel. I'm it, sure it, not his real name. I, you know what, I, I asked him, he said it was, but who knows, you know. Now, here's I'm, something, here's something that just hit me, and I didn't think about it. Guess where I got married? God, you tell, which marriage? The this third, one, fourth, the, fifth, sixth? The, the eighth. Yeah, no, this you one. This current one. Oh, to Marjorie. Now, where did you get married? Lake Tahoe. You did? Yes. How long ago? Oh, this was about, uh, about, 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 about 2010, yeah, yeah. I think. You don't remember, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Where, and, where, and, and, where, in Ta- where in Tahoe did you get married? One of we, got, we got married on the North Shore. Okay. Well, yeah. Much nicer. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Love Chapel, the last time I was up there, and it's been five years, yeah. was still there. Yeah. You know, they were still giving sleigh rides. Yeah. And, um, you know, Caesars Tahoe now is some, you know, corporate, not that it wasn't corporate before, but yeah, a right. faceless right. stone edifice. But it didn't have... You know, I remember remember one of the jokes I used to do. You would walk through the lobby of Caesars, yeah. and they'd have those big statues of you know whoever the Greek, you know, or the Roman gods were. You know, yeah. and, you know, peeing in a pond with lily pads. <laughs> you know, these naked, uncircumcised phalluses peeing yeah. in a pool. And I remember them telling me the first time I opened yeah. up for Kenny Loggins. You know, you should really work clean. I go really? You got a giant statue of Zeus or whatever the fuck he is peeing in a pool as soon as you walk in here. And I, I can't use a four-letter word, but seeing a big naked guy. Yeah, you, you got to work. You got to work clean, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you right. got to work clean, right? Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Memories, huh? Memories, memories. Yeah, that was uh, that was a nice weekend, though. That was a nice weekend. I was glad you called me and you said, "I'm getting married this weekend. Can you come up?" And I came up, and a whole bunch of other people came up, and uh, we were all there for a very special moment in your life. Well, that's when you could fly into Tahoe. That's when you could buy a ticket the same day. You didn't have to buy it three weeks in advance and fly on a Thursday and stay seven days, come back on a Wednesday. You know, so everybody just got a ticket for like twenty nine dollars from uh, from L A or San Francisco. That's you know, yeah. when you could fly into Tahoe, you go over that mountain, you thought you were going to die. Yeah, but well, um, well, we knew you, we knew you, and, and your temperament and so on. And of course, we were all saying to each other, "Ain't going to last." Right. <laughs> right. This yeah. marriage ain't it ain't going to last because you met her. She was walking across the street, wasn't she? No, 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 no. Teddy, no, that's how she died. Oh, oh, by the, the way, by the way, let me tell yeah. people this. So yeah. the Reverend Love is doing the, you know, the nuptial. Oh, yeah, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. I know yeah. the story you're going to tell. He right? says, um, Bobby, Teddy. Now, which one's Bobby and which one's Teddy? Right, right. right. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. I remember very well. Yeah, yeah. I remember them saying, you promise to cherish but, but, more than anything. And, yeah. You know, you get... He, he wanted to want to write our wedding vows, and I said, just just make it, you know, not, as non corny as you can, but just make it quick. And, yeah. And then and then we were supposed to go on a whole tour of 
you know, the, the, the valley there the, and the, the, the pasture, hills, and we yeah, were freezing yeah, our asses yeah, off. Yeah. Just let's get married again. Yes. And, and Caesar's was nice enough. They gave me a suite for the night, a big giant suite. And they supplied food and wine, yeah. and then we all went out to dinner. You know, I think the whole wedding cost me like three grand. So when wedding, and we all had a great time. Yeah, had the no, best it's champagne. Wonderful. Everything was great. It, it, but, to uh, this day, it, it is one of the more memorable moments of my life. How's that? Well, I did three shows that night. But anyway, how did how did, how did you meet her? I thought you wrote uh, my business manager Gary, and you said yeah. I just met the woman I'm going to marry. And it I was, met her. And I don't think yeah, you even no, no. knew her. No, no, no. I was playing at the Ice House in Pasadena, yeah. and um, a bunch of friends, mutual friends, mm -hmm. brought her to the show. She was by herself. She was gorgeous. Yeah. Know? And when I saw her, I kind of fell in love with her right away. I mean, she was. Yeah, you remember Teddy? She was, I mean, drop dead gorgeous and um, yeah. really, really smart, and very funny, and great designer. But anyway, she, um, I asked her out. We went out, and I guess I made a little bit of a scene. I, she was very, very shy, and she said she wouldn't go out with me again because I was, you know, being an idiot. I had a few glasses of wine. I, you know, doing yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I don't even remember what I was doing. You're always an idiot. But, go ahead. Yeah, anyway, always. Yeah. But I guess yeah. Yeah, to her, she's not used. to Well, that she kind didn't of realize that it's what you do as your profession is being an idiot. Being it, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And Jerry Lewis has always said, you know, he's, that's that was always been a line of Jerry Lewis's. He said something, and I'm paraphrasing. You know, I make a living from acting like an idiot, which you know nobody encapsulizes that better than Jerry Lewis. But yeah. so anyway, she said, I'm not going out with you again. But come over, you can come over for dinner, and I'm going to make you dinner. And I went over to her house a week later, and she had made me this chicken that has to brine in in, in ice and lemon for like seven days. It was literally fall off the bone. Mm -hmm. You know, chicken's chicken, but it's the best chicken I've ever had. Yeah. It took her, we got married, it took her like eight years to make me that chicken again. I go on the road, she said, what do you want for dinner? And I go, I want that chicken. You know, and it would always take seven <laughs> days and she was busy. She was working, I was working. And she made it yeah. and it just didn't come out the same. She only brined it for five days and it wasn't wow. as good. Wow. I got to see if I can find that recipe so I can make it for my girlfriend now. But um, anyway, so that was a great yeah. story that went nowhere yeah. but no i never but, but the they they we, we all said hey you know bobby it's not gonna last you know it lasted well until your wife passed how many years 30 i think we were together a couple years before that you know it's mind-boggling to me because you know as well as i do because you're a tad older than i am but you think back to i think about this all the time you know about you know she's been gone five years this past April, March, five years she'd been gone, and I've been with my girlfriend now almost five years. But you know what it's like. You know, you start starting about when you were at the quake, and what, 25 years ago, and you you think back, and you know, and it's so cliched. But when your parents told you, and your uncle told you, and your friends told you, oh, it goes by really quickly. You know, mm -hmm. it does. It's like, it's like it's like that John Lennon line: "Life happens, you know, while you're waiting for life to happen." You know, yeah, it's yeah. Just, no, it's yeah. true. It's true. But the thing is that uh, that she um, um, that you met your new girlfriend because no, her, her husband had recently died. So you both had the same experience. Well, what was really interesting, and I'm tired of telling the story. She doesn't really like. I don't. I think she's used to me telling people because it's 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 horrible but beautiful. It's fascinating. My uh, my girlfriend, um, her husband was a major Hollywood producer yeah. and manager, yeah. and I knew him for many okay, for, uh, since I was. He a was a comic. major. He was a major player. A major guy, and yeah. I, mean, I, I knew him from when I was a doorman at the now defunct famous uh, boarding house in San Francisco. I must have been twenty, twenty-one years old. Anyway. Yeah. I knew the guy for a long, 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 long time, and he managed a lot of people, but for some reason, and I'm very proud of this, I was his favorite comic, and he handled a lot of comedians, big time guys, and he loved me, he come see me all the time, but you know, when you always say to people, hey, we'll get together, but you know what, when I'm on the road, and well, wait he's a minute, working, did he ever manage, he, did, wait a minute, did he, he loved you, but did he ever manage you? My manager, Sherry Marsh, went with his company oh, for like I see. Okay. six months to a year. Yeah, he tried to do a few things for me, but he was really had his hands full with all these other people, and it never worked out yeah. for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. But what was really interesting is, that, like I said, I, uh, I always want to get together with him. We should have lunch sometime. And again, so, hey, we'll have lunch. But you know what? When I was on the road, almost three weeks out of the month, I come home, packing, unpacking, packing, unpacking. You know, want to see my kid. I want to take my kid to school. I want to take my kid to Disneyland. I want to have dinner with my wife. You know, you know. And then he's busy and he's working on a picture. So finally, you know, we got together um, about four or five months before he passed away. I didn't realize that he lived literally 
five minutes from me. In L.A., that's like next door neighbors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, New York, you can take a subway to the village and be there, you know, no time. But, you know, in L.A., to drive from the valley where I live to Santa Monica or whatever. Yeah. But he literally lived five minutes away. And right between our two homes is a beautiful little shopping center with a couple of great little restaurants and great little nightclubs. So we met up there at a sushi bar. And I go, I didn't realize you lived five minutes from me. Meanwhile, he died five months later. And uh, they had a big service for him. And his widow, who I never met, she didn't like the whole showbiz thing. She never came out to the clubs and right. wasn't really part of that. She had her own business. So she um, she invited me to the service, and it was really nice. A lot of people showed up. And, you know, Billy Crystal got up to spoke, and Rob Reiner. I'm trying to remember John Lovitz and Martin Short and Mike Binder. And... Uh, Oh, three or four of the luminaries and mm. it was you know it mm. was big and she puts me on at the end I mean, what, do you, what do you have to put me on the end for I gotta follow Lovitz and this guy and that yeah. guy. <laughs> you, you, you were my husband's favorite comic so, so I gotta close the show now and you know anyway um, she invited me back to the house you know the Jews mm -hmm. you sit there you have a little meal and then my wife dies you know after getting hit by a car in Mexico literally three months later and I called her up and I said we're having a little party celebration of her life in my house mm -hmm. and she couldn't make it i was on the road she was on the road same kind of we're both busy on the road yeah right and we finally right. go in august this is four or five months after my wife's death i take it to rayo's restaurant you mm -hmm. know the famous rayo's in new york they had an outpost here but here's a funny story she said to me when she met her husband she didn't realize he was a big macha big producer right and their first date they went to the palm and you know, they have all the caricatures on the wall of all the celebrities and the regulars, right, you know, right, the caricatures. Right, right, right. So sort of like the Hirschfeld looking, whoever does the artwork. Yeah. So they're sitting underneath his, his caricature. Mm -hmm. And she goes, who is this guy? And we're going to a restaurant. We're sitting underneath his picture, you know, and she found the kind of funny people coming up and kissing his ring like he was a godfather. So um, I take it to Rayo's and I didn't tell her. I made sure that they put me in a booth in the back underneath my picture. <laughs> and I said, you know, that was really weird about your late husband that he had to sit under his picture. But you know, a lot of guys in showbiz were like that because I can't go to a restaurant unless I'm sitting under my picture. And she didn't know. So she looked up and there was my picture sitting above us. She didn't know it was there. Yeah. So it's kind of it was yeah. pretty funny. But it's the, it, funny. It, it, it's, it's interesting that, that you you met each other and and connected because you did have something in common. You know, well, you, a lot of people go, you know, a lot of people do that, the rebound thing. Yeah. You find somebody right away. It's like when your dog dies, you got to go out and get another dog to try to replace the dog. Um, it's similar. I, I'm not comparing wives well, to but dogs. But this is not Bobby. Bobby, a rebound yeah. is something you do, and then you go on to the next one. This right. wasn't a rebound because this thing's been last has lasted for five years now. Well, what's funny is after our first date, I went back. My brother was sleeping on my couch, yeah. and I said, "I just met the woman. I, I think I fell in love." He goes, "Your wife's been gone five months." And uh, and I would call my girlfriend, Dominique, and I would say to her, you know, um, I'm, I'm in love with you. She thought I was insane. Um, but I took her out four or five more times. And now it's uh, but here's the thing. She still lives in that house five minutes from me. She just left right yeah. before you and I yeah. uh, did this, uh, did, did our little interview thing. So I, I like every weekend I either spend at her house or she spends at my house. But you know something? I know people who have done that. And their relationships have lasted much longer than if they were living under the same roof. Well, I love my house. You know, my wife, you've never been to my home, but my wife did a great job with it. And slowly, I haven't man caved it, you know. Right. There's no, right. but there's a few more monsters and a few less flower pictures. <laughs> there's a few more, you know, I know skulls I know. On, my, on, on, my, on top of my sock drawer where there was maybe a, you know, a, a whatever she had, you yeah. know. And um, so slowly, you know, the, the cleaning people now have a beautiful collection of, of plates and, and vases. And my daughter <laughs> took what she could. Goodwill. I've kept yeah. them alive for the last yeah. uh, five yeah. years. Give me, you know, my wife collected a lot of girly stuff, nice stuff. But so anyway, I have my house. She has our house. We go back and forth uh, Monday, yeah. Tuesday. We split so I can have, you know, the food I want, my spaghetti meatballs, my cheeseburgers, yeah. things she doesn't like. And they, so it's, yeah. it's a great relationship. Um, the way we obviously, have this, it obviously. worked out. And I met her. She's a lovely, lovely woman. And, yeah. uh, you know, if you ever lose her, it's your fault. Anyway, right. Uh, right. I want to ask you something. 
You, uh, when we first set this up, you said to me, well, I don't normally do these interviews, but for you, Alex, you know, and of course, then I'm yeah. appreciative and then I'm owe it uh -huh. to you for the rest of my life, you know. Uh -huh. And right. then you said, I, you know, I'm really, I'm retired. I'm not a comedian. I'm not in the business anymore. Are you right. really not in the business anymore? Well, it's sort of like, you can't fire me. I quit. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of like, um, yeah, yeah. well, you know, look. Quentin Tarantino calls, or, you know, Scorsese calls, anybody calls. You know, I, I, I would. You're happy. Woody to... Allen calls me again. Yeah, of course, I'm going to do a movie. Um, okay, so first of all, since COVID, everybody was kind of semi retired. Right. You know, everybody was forced to retire. So what happened was look, look, I, I was getting sick of stand up comedy. I did it as long or longer than anybody. You know, was, you know there's guys in this business that have done stand up for. 40, 50 years, you know, Carlin was one of them, Seinfeld's one of them, Rickles, one of Rickles. Them. And then, Rickles, and they kept doing it, they kept doing it, and they didn't, I, not, I, I'm sure none of them needed to do it, or needs to do it, you know, but you watch Bill Maher's show, and every weekend, or every few days, every time he's off, he's still back on the road, uh, before COVID, it was, he'd always say at the end of the show, next week I'll be here, and he'd go all over the country, right, and right. Seinfeld, okay, they love it, and maybe right. if I was making that kind of money, and had those kind of fans, Mm -hmm. I would love it too, but here's the thing: <clears throat> forty plus years, maybe forty-five. Yeah, yeah. that'd be the plus. Yeah. Forty some years of playing, you know, some yuck yucks in Columbus, Ohio, or whatever, and getting up in the morning and flying in a day early to do morning radio, where I've got to be driven by some waitress who wants to be a doctor and sitting in traffic to do some hip hop station, where nobody, none of those people are going to come see my show anyway. And doing the top 40 station with the soccer moms and then doing two shows that night having a horrible opening comic and who's working really blue and yeah you, 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 you know i mean look there's some great comedy club and it made a great living it was fun for a while mm -hmm. but it's a young man's game um you know buddy hackett don rickles all those you know those well, guys by the time by, by the time they reached that age they were working right. like the big rooms in in exactly Vegas, okay which exactly. is different than working some stupid comedy club in the morning exactly Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and to be honest with you, you know, there, there's a whole generation of new comics now mm -hmm. and, and social media comics. You know, it's like a lot of people, you, know, you can't get a book deal, people have said, unless you have, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, publishers. Look, do you have a half a million, you know, followers on Twitter? You, are you big on social media? Do you have a TikTok account? Yeah, you know, I don't like any of that stuff. It, it doesn't, you know, the Twitter thing, I, I even well, stopped doing that also, once in a while. Also, I, Bobby, Bobby, yeah. I got to ask you, this is a very important question. Yeah. Your act, how do it play today in the Me Too era? Okay, first of all, I don't know because, okay, that's, yeah. okay, I was, I was getting to that actually. Yeah. The other, okay, but, but the other thing was, is that now, look, there's a lot of comics. Some are good, some are actually awful. I try to watch all these Netflix specials and usually can't get through more than 10 minutes. Yeah. There's a lot of, really funny comic uh, I don't want to say, uh, sound like this old fart oh the comics today they all suck you know like Milton Burl used to say that about my generation of comics they're dirty they're not yeah. funny we did this but I watch a lot of stuff that's been rehashed that's been done not that they stole it but you know you see all this stuff comics doing you're smoking pot your parents come in and go what is this Cheech and Chong 1971 I, I think they did that and any, anyway so much stuff has been done but it, you know there's a new generation of viewers and millennials and people that are watching comedy on their on their iPad or uh, anyway my generation and our generation because you're certainly a little bit older than I, we're not going to comedy clubs you're not going out you know if you want to watch comedy you're probably as sick of it as I am you can turn on Netflix and see a million people on your big screen TV and people well, it's not the same as being in a club really with some asshole next to you is talking with his valet parking where you can't drive because you've been drinking because <laughs> there's a bachelorette party yeah, a bunch of drunken exactly. cunts because the drinks suck because the hamburger's cold because the food sucks what do I need to do that for when I can watch it in my home, fall, fall asleep, make some popcorn, watch the rest tomorrow? So anyway, my, my audience was either dying, going away, or, and I was getting tired of flying. You know, if I was Bill Maher and Jerry Seinfeld, you're flying on private jets, yeah, but right. you're flying coach and your flight is canceled, you're on a Holiday Inn Express in the middle of nowhere, it was getting old. Yeah, and now, what's interesting is you say, well, at least you got all those air miles, but the last thing you want to do when you're not working is get on a goddamn airplane. I haven't been on a plane in two years, and uh, me and my girlfriend are going to Mexico in the fall, but that'd be fine. It's a two-hour flight. We're going on vacation. But, yeah. but anyway, the, the point being that I'm, I'm, I'm just too tired of doing all these clubs. And now, with COVID uh, hopefully going away, all these clubs are opening up again. So there's dozens and dozens of comics who sell more tickets than I do, 
You yeah. know, some of them funny, some of them not, but whatever. Clubs don't care. They're, they sell tickets. So the clubs are backed up with people they need to give gigs to. So when you ask me if I was retired, yeah, I don't want to go back to the clubs. It's kind of like no it's kind of like I'm retired. Okay, right. I don't want to be. I you know I would like to be plying my trade other than on some lousy internet show. Right. Right. Uh, some uh, lousy washed up comments like Bobby Slate. Yeah, the, 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 uh, we could call this yeah. the washed up hour here. Anyway, yeah, right. uh, that's actually great. Yeah. But <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is is that 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 uh, we are 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 kind of doing what we're doing because not because we want to but because that's the way things are right now. My what I did the radio I did doesn't exist anymore. Okay, okay, well, that's the one thing, too. I know a lot of radio people who have told me the same thing. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and it does relate to comedy. I, but see, I don't want to do stand-up anymore. I'm sick of it. I haven't written a joke. I mean, every once in a while, I think of a great line that I used to do, or a mm -hmm. great line, and I throw them in a little shoebox I have here, that if I ever go back and do a show, <clears throat> you know, here's some stuff I want to try, here's some stuff that I used to do. Um, but um, like I said, the clubs, my money went down tremendously. It's not even worth doing anymore. Mm -hmm. And right now... I have enough money to live off for, for a few years. I don't know what I'm going to do in a few years. And I'm doing some radio commercials. Skechers hired me to do a lot of radio spots for them. So that's paying some bills. Now, you know, I'm, I'm sending my daughter back to college at 33. She's going to school. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, it's, I, I'm not, I, I, yeah, I'd like to be making more money. If somebody calls me and puts me in a movie, I'll do it. I don't want to read for a sitcom. I don't want to be on a sitcom. I actually, you know... One of my biggest fears, I always had a major problem, and I don't know how guys do it, and it could be maybe I have ADD or the drugs I did. Maybe I'm not as bright as I thought I was, but I always have a hard time memorizing a half-hour sitcom. I've yeah, done, yeah. you know, a yeah, dozen I understand where I, I, I'm the same way, although I did... I can't memorize a lot. I did learn how to memorize when I was doing uh, uh, some stuff for Channel 7, and I did these pieces, and right. I had to memorize them. And after a while, I got used to learning that don't put the pressure on you to memorize the line right uh, understand what the line is supposed to be okay right i, I get that yeah. i've gone to a million acting coaches who explain that to yeah. me yeah. It, 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 it it's really hard for me and when you do a sitcom look it's, it's a half hour show which means it's only about 20 minutes yeah when you think about it and then there's you're not in every scene so it's really only 10 or 15 minutes of stuff to learn so you're going on a monday and by wednesday thursday they're changing the script they're updating the script they're revamping the script you're shooting friday in front of a live audience it always made me crazy and um i guess if you are to show week after week like seinfeld or whoever you know you get your brain starts to work that way you know kevin pollack always yeah. amazed me because he's on that uh mrs Maisel, and kevin had these you know some nice big monologues and some nice big scenes and since the show was I guess developed and created by playwrights. They want they want their lines exactly word for word. 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 Yeah, right. I've been very lucky. In some of the movies I've done, when I, I've done like maybe 15, 20 movies. <laughs> Only one or two minutes. In each well, movie. No, what I was going to say is the latest film you did for Woody Allen, which I saw, right. which is uh, right. called I'm, Something's Festival. I can't remember the uh, name Rifkin's name. Festival. Rifkin's right. Festival. Right. Uh, you only have one line. Well, yeah. But did he, you? I, and I, my yeah, question but, is, did you blow it? No, okay. Uh, well, no, I blew Woody. That's how I got the part. Get up, folks. You see? I still got it, Alex. <laughs> it kept meeting there. Um, no, but you know what it is? Um, but over the years, what's great about doing movies, if you work for a guy, I've always been very, very lucky that, that I worked for some great directors, and you could ad lib all your stuff. When I worked for Barry Levinson and Bandits, he let me make up, him and Bruce Willis and Billy Bob Thornton, we did a few scenes, yeah. and we kind of made up everything as we went along. Barry goes, do another scene, because Barry was a stand-up comic. And when I worked with Robert England on a show called Nightmare Cafe, it was directed by Wes Craven. That wasn't a live studio audience, so we could go up, and he said, do whatever you want. And when I worked with Amy Heckerly, you know, mm -hmm. Fast Times at Ridgemont High director, she's always let me ad-lib. Anyway, and Woody, I worked for three, four times, always lets you ad-lib lines. And so I've been very lucky. But that last movie, I told you the other day when I talked to you that he flew me to Spain, to do one line in a movie because he likes me. Um, um, I don't know people think, well, a lot of people don't want to work for Woody now because of these bullshit allegations, which I don't even want to get into. No, that's, read his they're, book, bull, they're bullshit. They're bullshit. No, they're bullshit. If yeah. you watch, I, I could watch that show on HBO. HBO should be embarrassed that they even showed that. But when I'm is somebody just going to come out and say, Mia Farrow's a fucking nutcase? Well, everybody has. Yeah. Uh, they have. A million people have. I don't know the woman, uh, but a million people have, including. 
her son Moses, who is a child psychologist. But anyway, I don't want yeah, to get into all yeah, yeah. But I've known Rudy for a long time, not that well. But um, um, but if you read his book, apropos of nothing, it's, it's yeah. it, not only does he well, address also that whole he's thing. been very decent to you. He used you in his Great. series. You know, he's yeah. used you in yeah. a couple of his films. Wonder Wheel was one of them. Right. Latest right. one is this one. Yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you, but this is why one reason that I'm, and then we'll, I, I do, I do want to address that thing you asked me about the political correctness of Me Too movement. But yeah. when Woody put me, I knew him for years. And we by have by the way, again. I want to say to everybody, this interview is going longer than any interview we do, and uh, we'll go to our panel after this is through. But to our panel who might be watching. Fuck you! I got this. I got a great. Well, you know what? Here. By the way, I, I see. I get all dressed up. I'm going to garden. I do my gardening after this. I said, I wonder if I should put on a regular shirt for Alan. I said, It's yeah. hundred degrees yeah. here. Yeah. I'm going in my backyard to garden. This Why? is fine. You don't get dressed and, up. And, Why should I? And, oh, I don't know. You have people waiting to talk. But so here, this, this no, is the, interesting. They, they, they can they can wait. This is. Yeah, you people can wait. Come yeah. on, I'm fascinated. Yeah, this I don't um, get to talk yeah. to Bobby that often. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you could have broken this up into 10 interviews, did like a miniseries. Yeah, I um, could. I was thinking of telling you, well, why don't we stop and then we'll start and do another one. Yeah, instead of watching one long show that nobody's looking at, why don't you do a whole series that nobody will watch? Yeah, uh, right. But with all due respect <laughs> to your imaginary viewers. Um, uh, anyway, but here was one fear that I had. Okay. Woody Allen I knew for years. And um, not, not really well, but we would have dinners mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to comics, having dinner with Woody Allen, it's like, I don't know, <clears throat> Steven Spielberg, the certain people in the business are these giants that you want to talk to. It's like if you're in the music, you know, having dinner with Mick Jagger or somebody that you grew up with and watched. And, you know, I'll tell you, though, I, I, I don't know if I would have very many questions to ask uh, Steven Spielberg, but I would never end with the questions I would want to ask Woody Allen. Yeah, but here's yeah. the thing. When I did it with Woody for the first time, it was over at a friend's house. Yeah. We don't have to mention sure who the friend yes. is, please. <laughs> let's but, not. Uh, no, please. Please, let's not go into that. That's a whole other. No, please. I don't want to talk about that. Um, just for what he's saying. But anyway, yeah. um, we're having dinner, and uh, he told me Woody Allen was coming over to his house. He want to come over for dinner. I go, well, who's coming over? This is Woody and his wife. I go, who else? Just Woody and his wife. So he invites me over, and I'm thinking, I'm going to sit there with Woody Allen. I'm certainly not going to talk about his film. Oh, you know what movie I love? But I know that he was a big... A tremendous jazz fan, more Dixieland than anything. Right. And I loved the blues, and it was a big right. crossover thing, so right. I knew right. we could talk about music. Yeah. And I knew we loved, the, you know, sports. I was a big Yankee fan. I knew he was more into basketball than the Knicks, but I knew there was something there. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. knew that he loved Harold Lloyd and Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. And we could talk about that, which we did. And, you know, he'd lean, o he'd lean over, you know, to Soon Yi, who's a sweetheart, and he'd go, uh, you know, Harpo was the one that didn't talk. You know, it's, you, you try to keep her to the conversation, you know, you know, uh, but it was really Harold Lloyd. You know, he did his own stunts and she, you know, yeah. not that she even cared. Yeah. But anyway, we were talking and talking. And then it turned out what we really he knew my ex manager very well, because my ex not ma my ex manager, my 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 friend who passed away, yeah. Larry, yeah. who uh, <coughs> yeah. his company managed Woody. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a lot of mutual friends. And when I started doing stand-up in San Francisco, even though Woody's a New Yorker, of course he worked the Hungry Eye and he worked the um, Purple Onion. So we all had these mutual friends like Mort Saul, like Tommy Smothers, and David Brenner. And so we, we could talk comedy. We knew, you know, Enrico Banducci, who ran Enrico's. And we, so we sat there talking for three hours. And, you know, I get up to pee like three times because I'm drinking wine. And the only other person drinking at the table is, is Woody. And Woody has like three or four beers. And after this three-hour dinner, which went by so quickly, we had so much fun. At the end of dinner, I said to Woody, you know, he's a very quiet, very nice guy. You know, he never did the Woody character until we were leaving. And I said, you know, Woody, and pardon my impression here. I said, Woody, I can't believe at your age or my age, we're sitting there drinking, you had three, four beers. You never once got up to pee. He goes, that's one of my great attributes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But if you read his book, he has lines in there. When was the last time you read a book that you actually laugh out loud from reading a, the written word? Uh, you I'm know? trying to remember. There was one, but I can't remember what it was. You can read books. You can read Dorothy Parker, S.J. Perlman, and you'll see the old, these quotes of really fa funny people. Or, or Fanny Price yeah. said this, or Georgie Jessel. But you don't really laugh out loud. Right, when you're right. reading Woody's book, you see it in his voice. I'm telling you, you got to get it. Let's get, let's get back to this whole thing about the Me Too movement and where okay. your act would fit in all of this. Because it, 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 all of a sudden, the kind of things we found funny aren't f considered funny anymore. Oh, that's not right to do. That's not right to say. 
You know, right? right. Uh, um, you couldn't do any of the wife jokes you used to do. You know. Okay. Well, here was a problem that I did have, and this goes back before the Me Too movement and before COVID. When my wife died, a good sixty to seventy percent of my act was about my wife, not necessarily about her. But about, you know, and a lot of stuff's become cliched now, you know, it's mm -hmm. almost because everybody's done these kind of jokes. It would take my wife a long time to get ready or, or, or you know, whatever my jokes were. And with her not alive anymore, I couldn't do the joke. Henny Youngman was different. Take my wife, please. He did those long after she died. But those were just silly jokes. My You're stuff right. was more personal and then, you know, serious, yeah. serious. But right. it was more. Uh, more personal and, 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 and relevant and real. But so anyway, that part of my act was out. And then, you know, a lot of my act, I was just getting tired of doing. You know, when, when, and then when Trump came in to become president, I actually, and I think I used to do a joke about this, I started feeling sorry, or I felt more, instead of making fun of Mexicans, I was more on their side. And then, um, yeah. and you know, yeah. on women's side. I mean, I, I, I still like to make fun of that whole Me Too movement. But when assholes like Harvey Weinstein came out and, and Jeffrey Epstein came out, I was like, well, you know, it's hard to make fun of women now because now I see their plight a little more. Now my wife is gone. Now these poor Mexicans, you know, they, oh, they're all rapists and thieves. Fuck you, Trump. So it, it, I, I, a lot of my jokes I didn't want to do anymore. You yeah, know what you, I mean? You did do the gay a lot. Jokes, when I started yeah. doing gay jokes, I was one of the first guys to do them. And the, way, the reason I started doing them so much was in San Francisco. When I was a young comic, I remember a club having a gay comedy night. And over in Oakland, there was a black comedy night. And they would make fun of straight people and white people, which is fine. You know, white people do this. I got white people. I mean, and then the gays, yeah. you know, straight people. You know, but when I made fun of them, because I'm, you know, I, I, I'm the majority here, I can't make fun of them. Fuck you. Make fun, make fun of me. That's fine. Do all the Jew jokes you want, all the white men jokes. So, but don't tell me I can't make fun of you. There was no end of the no end of the amount you of. You remember this whole? Remember? It, it, most of the no gay end, people were it, fine. They were, a, well, well, what I always little... was bothered by, I was always bothered by Chris Rock. Always goes, you know, the funny thing about white people, you know, and I go, well, wait a minute, if I did that about blacks, he would just vilify me. Yeah, but you then know? he did his famous. I like I like black people. I hate niggas. So once he did that. You know, that put him back. You know, it's Chris always made fun of black people, too. Yeah, so it, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of stuff to be, you know, and, and he did it in a way that it wasn't like, okay, the comics, you know, the old cliche thing, the difference between cats and dogs. But if you're going to do a cat and dog joke, have the definitive one. You know, Leno was the king of that. People don't realize what a great comic he was. If you're going to make a joke about McDonald's or Chicken McNuggets make it or the how best small one. the bathroom yeah. is on an airplane, which you know, every comic did in open mic night, Leno would have the joke. You know, right? You know, so so yeah. if you're gonna have a great joke and a, and a smart joke, then it's okay. So would and you have Christmas. to? In other words, today, if you went back on the road, all of a sudden right. now there's no more COVID and the clubs are going. You know, it's nostalgia night. Let's bring back Bobby Slayton. Right? Would you have an act to do? You know, first of all, I have to remember it because I've worked in a year and a half. You know, um, people don't understand this, by the way. You can forget your act if you're not doing it every night. Oh, no, you, 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 a million comics have talked about this, and I've heard, uh, if you, at least me personally, mm -hmm. okay, I would work every week, okay, three weeks out of the month, and that was usually Wednesday through Saturday, Thursday through Sunday, three, two to four nights a week, mm -hmm. and I'd work two or three weeks in a row, take a week off, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and if I took a week off, it would take me a, one show, one night, to get back into my act, you know, because... You know, yeah. and the problem I had, and it was a good problem, one good thing about my act, was I never did anything in the same order. I, I would try to have a joke to end with, maybe something to open with, and it would always be the same thing. So a lot of comics would follow a certain order, and I would just be bouncing all over the place because mm -hmm. I'd start talking to some of the audience, mm -hmm. forget where I was, you know, and go on to another topic, maybe try to come back to it, which usually I could, unless it was a second show, and I've already had three or four vodkas, then by the end of the evening, you know, I would sometimes, you know, your memory's not quite sharp. Yeah. But anyway, um, I would still have an act now. Um, it would take me a while to get back into it. You know, the anti-Asian stuff, I would still do the Asian jokes. Um, I would still do the gay jokes. Um, but you know what? All it takes is two or three idiots in the audience to start giving you shit, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And it used to be, look, even drunks and bachelorette parties, you try to ignore them and you can't. You know, there are a few comics. I think my friend Nick DiPaolo, yeah. I think he used to have in his contract, no bachelorette parties at my show. And there's been a few well-behaved bachelorette parties, but most of them have been monsters. Uh, so yeah, I yeah. think now the generation of millennials who want to change the world, you know, 
every white yuppie kid with the Black Lives Matter. And, you know, and you find it's a lot of the guys with the man buns who work at Starbucks who are the ones, you know, all of Asian people left the Asian jokes and black people left. But then there's some uptight liberal douchebag white guy who thinks he's an arbiter of taste and yeah. the judge for what well, I put I, I often say. said, why is it everybody's upset by black jokes or white? You know? Yeah, no, uh, basically. Know, uh, yeah. You, usually I found that... Uh, uh, you know, you would kid about blacks, and, and they liked you. You, you yeah. played very well to a black audience. Well, you know? you know, it depends how you work it. You know, I play Indian casinos, and, yeah. you know, they've always been very, you know, careful with the Indian jokes. It's an Indian casino. And I remember, you know, whatever jokes I did. And by the way, it's funny that they call them Indian casinos, but they don't like to be called Indians. You know, <laughs> woo, take in your wampum, white man, but don't call us an Indian. You know, yeah. <laughs> what did you call a Native American casino? Who are these people? <laughs> so yeah, these I, people I think, anyway? I, I think but the thing about stand-up comedy, you have to really want to do it. When it becomes a job, yeah, and just a job, well, let me, and it's not fun anymore. Let me say this because we're uh, we're kind of running out of time. This audience is going to hate me for you know not getting to them. But I would rather okay. I would rather talk to you for two hours. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Well, we got to we, we, we but to begin with. We have to do this again sooner than I've said. You know. I really, I, I've enjoyed this. You and I just talk. We're just friends, you know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I do say that when people ask me, who is the best comic you've ever worked with? Bobby Slate. But, you know, it's funny. There are better know. comics now. There are guys that astound me. No, 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 no. Like, like no, Chris Rock. No, no, no. Like in, in your like opinion, In your opinion, because you exclude yourself in that, uh, in that uh, um, group. But the fact is, Bobby... That when people say to me, "Tell me, uh, 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 tell me a funny comic," I say the funniest comic I know and the best, the best technician, okay, is Bobby Slate. Okay, watch, watch Bill Burr. And maybe oh, Bill, Bill Burr is incredible, but yeah, you are the best technician. I'm a technician. That's well, no, good. no, well, but I'm well, saying there's a technique to doing comedy. Yeah. Well, I was you good. Know. I, look, you do something for forty years, you better be pretty good at it. But there are guys that I watch, like Jerry Seinfeld, who. You know, it's mind-boggling to me. But whatever, it's fine. You know what? It's like baseball. You know, <laughs> there were guys that were better than Mickey Mantle. Not that I'm the Mickey Mantle mm -hmm. comedy. There were plenty of great, great ball players in baseball. But by, there's always the way, the two names, 10, 20, 30, 40 guys who are just as good, if not better. The two names that come to mind for me are you and Bill Hicks. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. But then again, I'm, I'm limiting this to people I've actually worked with. Okay. Yeah, Seinfeld's great. Bill Burr's great. I didn't work with them. I worked right. with you. You know. I would have. Okay, I'm gonna let you go, but I would have liked to see what Bill Hicks would have been doing now. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah. You know? It's really a shame. He was. It's true. like saying I like. It's like Jimi Hendrix. What would he be doing now? I. Mean, but you know. Hey, whatever. listen. Thank you for spending so much time with us, and and uh, stay where you are because of when I'm through doing this, I want to talk to you for a few more seconds. Okay. Wait. Wait. I, wait. I, yeah. Okay. okay. Just, just, and stay, then you, just stay online. Okay, we're done. Yeah, I'm okay. just going to stop recording. Stop recording, and then I, I got to go garden before. I, it, know, well, maybe I we can. Be, yeah, too bad. Even you though it's have... nighttime, I guess I, I don't know if I'm supposed to. Uh, yeah, it's nighttime. Overnight. It's nighttime here. It's noon in California. <laughs> you knew it. Yeah. I <laughs> Ladies go garden. and gentlemen, the incredible Bobby Slayton. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Ah. Huh? Huh? Uh, I, I know it took a lot of time. It was a long interview. But we started talking, and before I knew it, uh, 40 minutes had gone by, and then 41 and 42, and I said, I better call this, stop this now. But I, uh, you know, he's like I, uh, one of my oldest and dearest friends, and um, a person who has given of himself to my career as well. And I always, always appreciate that. I better get to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, the people here. Otherwise, they're going to be very mad at me. There are only a handful of them anyway waiting. So it wasn't like I, I, I made people wait. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see it. here. Let me... Uh, let me... Uh, Right, bring these guys yeah, bring on. These guys. Limit. Somebody's got, somebody's got us on there. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, all righty. Uh, hello there, Alan. Hello there, Charlie. Hello there, Trucker Steve. Hello there, Jeff. Hello there, um, uh, Schmoody. Okay. Nice having you people here tonight. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed that. You know. Yeah. That that's uh, Bobby Slay- Slayton is a classic comic. I mean, he's just great. Yeah. You know, I remember him from the eighties and nineties. I mean, this guy's just great. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I would no. hate you if you took up the whole show with him. Hey, he's great. <laughs> yeah, I would have. I would have been fine with it too. Yeah. Well, I could. Yeah. I could have done that, yeah. but I. I. You know, I. I want to save it for another day because I. I. I'm. I am. I always say I'm going to call him, and I'm kind of. I don't know. For some reason, I don't because I guess it's a certain. I'm not afraid of calling him. It's just that uh, I want to catch him at the right time. And uh, the other day, I saw the Woody Allen film, and I saw him in it, and I wrote him a little note. Next thing you know, he doesn't just, he doesn't text me back. The phone rings, and there's Bobby. And uh, and so I said to him, you want to do that? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. He says, I don't like doing these things at all. He says, but for you, I'll do it, you know. And he's right. I mean, you know, he was probably getting calls left and right from people going, oh, we're, we're going to have a bunch of comics on, and then we're going to talk about this, and we're going to play this game and that game. And uh, this is somebody so bong hits for Jesus. Hold Big on green. a second. What? Hold on a second. We may have to get rid of this person immediately. Uh, hello there. Oh, you. Jesus. Oh, John Larkin. <laughs> Why do you do it, John? Fuck you, John. Yeah, it's a childish thing to do. It b- bong hits for Jesus. What? Anyway, so I, uh, I, uh, so we, so we did it, and I, I just so enjoy having him on and and talking to him because he's an old friend, you know. And uh, it's, but, but he was just saying that people would call him and say, "Hey, you want to do my podcast?" and we're gonna have a bunch of other comics on. We'll play games and things like that. And he just, eh, I don't need. He do doesn't. That. He doesn't give himself enough credit, Bobby Slayton. Oh, I you think know? I. I look. Uh, um, it's good that he doesn't give himself enough credit. It's when you start giving yourself too much credit, you're obnoxious and you, nobody can stand you. You yeah. know, only like only Woody bad co- only bad comics think they're good. Okay. Uh, it, it's the ones who, who always question how good they are that keep at the top of their game. And he's always been at the top of his game. I think it's a shame that he's kind of getting out of comedy, you know. But I understand why. You know, there's no place for me in radio anymore, and there's no place for him in comedy probably anymore. Uh, just given the prejudice of the time, he's an older comic. They don't hire older comics. Why? Because they want more. You know, the cheap comics uh, are are the ones who are new and, and don't care, you know. Anyway, I just, I love Bobby, and I was glad to have him on it. We'll do it more often, I promise you. Uh, but anyway, hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Uh, yes, uh, John? I was saying hi. Oh, 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 that was your, oh, okay. I didn't, re- didn't realize you were actually waving at me and saying, "Yeah, no, I'm um, flipping you my, off." My uh, my my name is in honor of uh, the last Supreme Court uh, decision uh, for fr- First Amendment was um, based on uh, a kid that had that sign at his school, "Long Hits for Jesus," and the and the new the next uh, upcoming First Amendment hearing hmm. that's going to be this year is for a uh, a cheerleader who got kicked off her, uh, or didn't make her cheerleading team. So, um, so she, uh, went on Snapchat and Snapchat and flipped off the, uh, the high school. Mm-hmm. So she, the high school is suing her and it's gone all the way to the Supreme court. Oh, Jesus. And the story is what I'm trying to say is that's what I love about this country. We can make such trivial things, and make them so important, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, can we get go back to Bobby Slayton. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just what? He's a lot more interesting, Bobby Slayton. Yeah, and okay. Bong gets for Jesus. Well, no, I no, but I agree with him. But the thing is that it's a shame we have to waste our time in the Supreme Court with cases like this. Yeah, that's you know, funny. that's what uh, I like about it. Yeah, so. you know, I mean, uh, well, then again, those people get paid a lot of money, so they should have to work for their for their jobs. Although, although. SCOTUS did a good thing today. They once again 
kicked the Republicans in the teeth saying we're not going to get well, rid of Obamacare. Well, it's, it's what I've maintained all along, and that is that just because somebody tries to pack the court doesn't mean they're necessarily going to go a certain way all the time. Well, there's Trump Trump put three in there, and three of them oh, did and, not work and, for him yeah. or, or Obamacare. Yeah. No, what did Gorsuch, Gorsuch voted, uh, go, voted to uh, kill it? Yeah. There were but, two but, votes. It was Gorsuch and Alito, or Alito. Alito, Alito. yeah. But there were t two of them. You know, that's it. You know, it was a very, it was a, a definite. Two out of nine. Uh, yes. Huh? It, two out of nine. Out of nine. Well, I'm, I mean, I mean, Gorsuch was a Trump nominee. Alito wasn't. Oh, Gorsuch was. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. nevertheless, the other ones, the ones you thought would yeah. be. You know, let's kill Obamacare. Didn't want to do that. They also voted on something else, uh, which I tended to agree with, and that was that the city of Philadelphia, I think, had prevented the, the uh, um, uh, church uh, from getting any uh, from being able to um, run their um, uh, what do you call it? The, the what? Adoption. Their adoption. Uh, well, it's adoption, but it's, you know, uh, what do you call it? When, foster care. Foster care. Uh, they, they said that they couldn't run their foster care system because they excluded gays from being able to get kids in foster care. And uh, the Supreme Court said, no, they couldn't do that. Now, it was a very narrow kind of decision. It doesn't apply broadly, but it no, applies... In that particular case, you got it wrong. The Supreme Court said they could do that, but only in a certain narrow kind of a situation. Yeah, but basically, I don't think I. You know, I, I, while I do believe that uh, kids certainly probably could benefit from actually being in a a yeah. um, uh, you know a, a mixed a same sex couple uh, relationship because uh, you know they're just as loving as anybody else. There is a factor that the church may have something against that, in spite of the fact that most of their priests are gay. But anyway, yeah. um, well, they shuffle them around like crazy. Yeah. And they're so yeah. well known for protecting kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm not, I'm never right. trust well, them. But the, the point that I, the point that I'm making is, I think I don't think it was an unjust decision. Okay. You know what's funny about that, Alex? They won't let the gay people adopt the children, but it's all right for the straight people to give them away, the kids. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like a farcical joke. Like and you can okay. have them, and it's okay, but you can't yeah. adopt them. It's like really. It's also o okay picture? for the gays in their uh, in their priesthood uh, to uh, diddle those kids. That's all <laughs> right, but you know. So I mean, I, it's it 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 I I but I think the decision was a correct one given the situation. Okay. Well, the First Amendment, it, you know, it's it's the church's right to, you know, it's they have their. their well, it's religious to... freedom. It's religious freedom. Yeah. 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 You know what I would do then if if hey if they I gave was, us Obama you know they gave us Obamacare today. Fuck it. You know. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We got that. I mean, and can you? I actually was following that when I was grading some comics working at home. And it was like, how can they really overturn that? I mean, they're going to rip upon health. Well, Trump wanted to, Alex. He really, because it had Obama's name on it. He was dying to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I bet he's pissed off today. Yeah. He's yeah. And his name is like the Republicans put it on it. Huh? It wasn't called Obamacare. It was called the Affordable Care Act. I know. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Uh, they called it Obamacare to prejudice people against it. Yeah. You know, oh, the uh, Affordable yeah. Care Act. Affordable Care Act sounds too good. <laughs> you yeah, know? It's almost like we're trying to help somebody get some insurance. God forbid you give somebody some insurance and let them go to the doctor. It's yeah. a horrible world, isn't now, it? Um, uh, the other thing that happened today, uh, and we talked about the briefly got into this last night, is about uh, uh, our president signing a bill making Juneteenth uh, a federal holiday. Uh, Juneteenth is a, uh, the, what can we call it, the anniversary, okay, of uh, I, not, the, not the freeing of the slaves, but the, the word getting to Galveston, Texas, I believe. Charlie, yep. maybe you can... Wasn't that a song by Presley? Or... No, no, no. What, what, Two what, years what? later. Yep. Two really? years later, he freed Somebody the slaves. The internet but... was running slow. Huh? Yeah. yeah well, what, 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 what was the exact situation in Galveston, uh, Charlie? 
they, uh, somebody brought the message to them and said they were free, and then that was the official beginning of freedom for blacks in America. Yeah, at least right? for the state of Texas. Uh, I, yeah. Basically, that was the last state. So finally, every former slave realized that they were free. Yeah. Now, I have nothing with Juneteenth being made a federal holiday, but I feel that if we do make it a federal holiday, we should do away with Martin Luther King's birthday. You know, we wiped out two presidents with that one. <laughs> Right? Yep. It used Probably to be Lincoln's five. birthday, followed a week later by Washington's birthday, and then all of a sudden we needed to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday, which is fine with me. I'd rather it be Malcolm X, but it's Martin Luther King. Make it Martin Luther King's birthday, uh, and um, uh, uh, they celebrate that. But then all of a sudden they come out with the Juneteenth. Wait a minute. The think? blacks have two holidays now? Yep. Now, hey, why don't we have 12? Well, if you want, I listen, I don't care if you make, as I said last night, a hundred different days of federal holiday, more time off for the rest of us, you know. But, I mean, I think that really something that was a little broader in scope would have been called for. Uh, because now do we say that the Mexicans should, have, you know, Latinos should have a, a holiday? Should we say that the Asians should have a holiday? I think all these people have, in their own way, contributed to the uh, the growth of this country, and have also been subject to great prejudice. The Chinese, for instance, they built they the, never they take built off the, the railroads in this country. Did. Yeah, you Alex, know? they never take days off. Never. Who? The Chinese. I mean, that restaurant that could be open twenty four seven. What do they serve the at that restaurant? Time. Thank God for that. <laughs> They never That's take the first time Tony's delegates. ever said they Chinese. Yeah. Normally you would say chinks. Yeah. But I mean, uh, oh I, but I, they're, they're, am I am I right wrong about this, Charlie? Tell me about you know why all of a sudden two holidays now. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't remember anybody crying out to have Juneteenth as a national holiday. Oh, wait a minute. Now you're also. You're of the black persuasion, as we can probably tell. And if you can't tell, well, fine. It, that shows you have no prejudice at all. Okay. Uh, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This seemed, it, it, I never heard of Juneteenth till about three weeks ago. You know, I never heard of it till I moved to Texas. Really? Yeah. Do you have an, do you have an iPhone, Alex? What do you mean, do I have an iPhone? Yes, I you have an iPhone. iPhone versus an Android. Yes. So iPhone has had the date there for three years. <laughs> really? On the phone, automatically on the calendar. Hold on a second. Yeah. It doesn't it show, it doesn't show up on my thing. Apple calendar. It does not Alex. show up on my Apple calendar. I wonder if Phil runs a sale for Martin Luther King or if he may hear a Martin Luther King mm -hmm. sale. That probably does. I can see him putting the wind in the window. Let me see here. Now, the, it's actually, it's Friday Morning. is the date. And here, it doesn't no. say anywhere. It doesn't it's say Saturday. Juneteenth. Actually, well, yeah. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Apple products do. Officially, it's June 19th, which would be Saturday. Right. June 19th? Right. Okay, let me go over to the 19th. Well, here it is now, Juneteenth. There uh, it is. There it is. Right there. Got to get the right date. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's why. Yeah, uh, the reason they, I said Friday is it's being stuff. celebrated oh, okay. on Friday as yeah. a federal holiday because uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's on sa on Saturday. So anyway, um, but that. Uh, but you know, I never heard of Juneteenth before this. You know, I oh, never. I you know, though. I and if you were gonna make a holiday. Why wouldn't you do it the day of the Emancipation Proclamation? Well, what I, what somebody, what Marjorie suggested is a holiday for all of us, and what we should do is make Election Day a holiday. Yeah, that is, they should have, we should have off that day. Even if you don't want to vote, you should have And off. then everybody, you know, gets the day off, and they use that day to go out and vote. They don't have to take time off of work. They don't have to get their pay docked, you know, yeah, whatever. You're right. And then there'll be no complaints at the, uh, I couldn't get to the, to the law yet. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Like, you know, but Kathleen doesn't. Yeah, the Republicans wouldn't be. Kathleen that. doesn't have a job, so, or do you have a job? I didn't she's ask you about employed. that, Kathleen. Of course. Yeah. You you still selling stuff on eBay? 
Yep. And, oh, okay. What are you selling the watches still? No, uh, uh right now I have a bunch of collectible t shirts and crap up. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, good. And then no complaints. You, you've been on you've been doing that since nineteen not July eighteenth, ninety eight. Wow. I'll tell you when I started. Let me look at my hand. Wow. When I did it, the I watched it. A friend of mine told me about it. I watched it for about six months. Mm -hmm. Started selling watches, and within six months, seventy grand paid off <laughs> my bills, bought the house. Wow! And between UPS and eBay, I was pulling in close to half a million. What? And I paid taxes <laughs> wait, on wait, every wait, wait, bit wait. of it. And 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 I and, and, he and, let and, go, and, 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 and now he's trying to mount his eyes and go, maybe I should take a look. <laughs> Where do you get the watches? And I didn't stick around. <laughs> and you were the big shot, Alex. Huh? Did yeah, but I mean, she, see, man, what, she was making you, a half a million a year. That, I, 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 was never, that I was never making a half a million a year. You were making big bucks. I was making big I bucks, make, but I didn't make a half a million a year. When I was yeah, working at Cuba, it was $3 it. an hour. I thought of what I was getting. <laughs> I got held up for three dollars an hour. Hey, I, if I'd known, if I had known that uh, you know that you uh, had, were making that much money every year, I would have had you pick up a few more dinners. <laughs> you are a cheap, cheap dick. <laughs> Why? What is with no, you? You know, I didn't uh, you like know him it, what is for with everything. what is with Bishop and his constant reference to me as cheap. Well, you do say you don't like when, but you're not a drinker, though. Remember, you said that alcohol is expensive, though, isn't it? When you have a drink, uh, yeah, but I know I, I just don't drink, I don't drink because yeah, it's too drink. expensive. You know, imagine he brings his own beer to the dinner, and he just puts it down. Wait a minute, ask the <laughs> so woman, his drinking interfered with his ask the woman who for a day. short time in her no. life owned me. Okay, no, now, one, ask Kathleen, Kathleen, am I cheap? No, who, me, am I cheap? No, him. no. okay, no. so stop oh. it, Jack. Yeah, that's kind of, Alex. You were saying you used to always take all the comics out. You said, remember they didn't, have, you know, that was nice. Yeah, you were flipping the bill. Get a company credit card. No, no, uh, no, never. Mm. No. Mm. Yes, yes, Jack. Yeah, I just came in here for a second to kind of correct something that was said earlier. Uh, even growing up in San Francisco, I heard about June nineteenth. Really? Yeah. Uh, now, now. Here's what happened historically. Let me let me make sure I got this thing on here. Uh, here's what happened. Charlie was right. The last state to hear about the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was Texas. A uh, U.S. naval frigate sailed into Galveston Harbor. Mm -hmm. The uh, guy that was in command of the ship was a guy named Granger. I knew one of his uh descendants back in the 70s the guy was a dentist and uh, they read the uh, emancipation proclamation told these black folks you're free then sailed away uh but other parts of the country other states even back in the 60s and 70s were celebrating other days when the emancipation proclamation was read in their state Oklahoma has a different day. Tennessee has a different day. And those are the only two states that yeah, I know. But, of. You know, when did we ever, as a, as a country in general, even hear about Juneteenth? I mean, maybe you did because it came in uh, to the sphere of your, of your life. Yeah. But it didn't come into the sphere of my life, and I'm sure that it didn't come into Al Allen's or uh, or uh, even even Charlie said he didn't hear of it until oh, he moved he to never Texas. Heard about Chicago. Well, different parts of the country, different school systems. Yeah, but still, but still. Well, okay, it. let me put it this way. You want Juneteenth? Take it. Have a good time with it. Celebrate it. I don't know what you would do. Certain foods maybe, certain traditions, whatever you want to do with it. Give us back Martin Luther King's birthday. We well, still have it, don't we? Huh? Yeah, it away. No, we don't. We don't. We gave Did up. We, we gave up Washington or Lincoln, whichever one you want to oh. say, uh, uh, to make because they didn't want to give us an extra day. That's really what it was all about, right? Oh, God forbid the businesses should have to give people another day off, right? So they had to give up something. So they took 
Lincoln's birthday and Washington's birthday, and it's called President's Day. Oh, that's right. Which You're is right. a federal Monday, holiday. Yeah. And, and, school, I used to have two and then they made Martin Luther King's birthday. I think that's fine. You want Martin Luther King to be celebrated? Fine. You know, much like a Washington, much like a Lincoln, fine. But I don't, mm. I, I, I think if you want Juneteenth as a federal holiday, you should have to give up Martin Luther King's birthday. And then maybe we can even take Martin Luther King's birthday and, you know, turn it into a Mexican holiday or a, a Latino holiday well, or, in, or a Chinese well, in Texas, holiday. We what? celebrate Cinco de Mayo. No, that, no, no, no. You go down and you put lime in a the fucking drink <laughs> and you get drunk <laughs> and you eat a taco and that's Cinco de Mayo. It doesn't have any kind of historical significance. When half of this country at one time, including Texas, including Oklahoma, were actually part of the California, were part of the Mexican Empire. You know, what, what does that have to do with it? Well, you said, what's the significance? No, what's the significance of Cinco de Mayo? What I'd say is you probably should celebrate the Alamo. Remember the Alamo? Yeah, you should celebrate you the Lincoln Alamo in, in, which, in, which, in which the Mexicans beat Mexico the living, so beat the living craps, uh, crap out of the white guys. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's a good data. Remember the Alamo. Now, yeah, what happened there at the Alamo, Travis, uh, Captain Travis, walked out on the parapet and said, who sent for the roofers? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Texas joke, right, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> Look, what I'm saying is this. Uh, King, certainly significant, but for different reasons. You know? Yeah, but, uh, but I'm saying that, you know, they wanted to do it. You know what it is? I think that the reason we just turned Juneteenth into a holiday, okay, into a federal holiday, uh, is because of, of white guys who were intimidated and, and they wanted to show how, how liberal they were and wanted to give blacks yet another holiday. I, you already have one. Okay? No, America has and, one. And we, no, if you want to change anything, maybe we no, should have it, a it, black it, heroes day. Why, why black anything day? Give something to the Latinos. Give something to <laughs> right, the let's, Chinese. Let's say people of color heroes day. No, let's give something <laughs> to the Chinese as an example. All right, let's their, do that. Who through their sweat built the railroads in this you country. Know, they're, they're, and we're kind of enslaved in doing that because they were brought over here. Yes, and then they were under, at the behest of their pretense, overlords. Under, uh, under false pretenses. Yeah, there, there are even some historians that believe, and there's pretty good evidence, that the Chinese actually discovered North America before the Europeans. Yeah. Didn't know that. Well, it, 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 that's not the point. The point I'm making is, is that I just think that, uh, uh, you know, it, it, enough is enough. You, the blacks got their person celebrated in their holiday. You don't want that one? Give it back. Let us give it to somebody else. Hey, Charlie, you know? why do we go for three-fifths of a person's day? <laughs> yeah. That would satisfy What the fuck is that all about? What's the point you're trying to make with that? I'm not trying to make any point. That, you know, I mean, I'm being serious here. I think Aren't, that look, there are a I'm, lot of I'm other be, people. I mean, America has been a country that has never been particularly good to foreign entities, whether it was the blacks they brought over as slaves, whether it's the Chinese they brought over to build the railroads, whether it was the uh, oh, the uh, Mexicans, the uh, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we've just been terrible. So, no, I mean, let's people. start making a few holidays for them, you know, and, 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 and we, we already have we day, already have why one. We have a day where we say we're just going to kick all the Europeans' asses for being <laughs> assholes. No, you know, really I mean, I just, I just, I, for some reason, I just think it was overkill, and I think it was a more a white guy's desire to feel really liberal. No, I You're think. Right. Uh, what, what you agree with me, mean, Charlie? What, what I think. Wait a minute, hold on a second, guilty. Jack. <laughs> wait a minute, Charlie. Were you, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, any, were you? Anybody I know. Jack, I'm trying talking to Charlie. All right. Uh, Charlie, did, did you say you agreed with me? Yeah, I think you're right. Because, like I said, I don't remember anybody. I don't remember hearing anybody raising a stink trying to get Juneteenth as a holiday. 
Yeah, except for some woman down in Texas somewhere. Yeah, I mean, oh, the yeah. first I really heard of is when, when they were taking the vote in, yeah. in Congress, in the House. <laughs> now, what were you trying to say, Jack? Well, I'm what I was trying to say uh, is I think, Alex, I think you're right, but it wasn't it wasn't guilt. It was to try to shut us black folk up. Well, that's another another yeah. thing as well. I and think that's should. way more valid than guilt. Yeah, you settled. Yeah. What you did is you settled for a holiday, which of course will be turned into sales. Yeah, you know, that's oh, yeah, it'll be. Right. It's Juneteenth when we have a uh, avalanche of sales on Juneteenth. Step right, step right in, and buy yourself a watermelon. Take it home, pass it off as a bowling ball as you go. Do have they had? Uh, you know, I, and I don't know. Have they done anything with uh, having uh, uh, Martin Luther King birthday sales? There's no. always Martin Luther King. Because I could, that would be a, land, I, a windfall because you could have now, slogans like, it's a mountaintop of savings. Now, yeah, that would be good. I have never seen that <laughs> in the 50 years that I have lived in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, I was there, saying that as a joke, Jack. Well, I thought you were being serious. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Alan? I mean, Alan? Oh, so I, I, I think the blacks actually have a third holiday in this country, Black Friday. <laughs> no, you don't like the bell, but I got to ring it for my brother there. That joke was from last Thank night. You, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, they did in a lot of stores for the longest time. I don't know if they still do. It had white sales. Mm -hmm. Yes. In which they sold that. linen so that you'd have clothing for your Ku Klux Klan outfit. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that is. And, and we, Schmoody, we should probably start a Scandinavian holiday for you. Can't leave our people out. Viking Day. Viking Day. Yeah. yeah. Let's all put get... our horns on. Thank you. Thank you. I was about to go that way myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and you could have a sales for that, like at Whorehouse. What about National Say if you're, if you're if you, if you're horny. Uh, <laughs> National Jew Day. It's when you go to to a sale and pay the sale price. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, that's a that's a major sin is playing, paying retail. That's yeah. right. But nobody pays retail anymore. They buy from Amazon. That's right. Yeah. That's Amazon. the new retail. You got to you got to know what you're buying at Amazon cuz yeah. yeah. <coughs> I I think what they do is they follow you. If you come from Walmart and then their prices are the same price as Walmart and they claim they don't have a way of finding that out, but if you go right to Amazon, I actually had... Well, no, actually, more and more in line with Walmart is like Costco. But Costco, on the other hand, they are cheaper, but you got to buy more of the stuff. Yeah. In other words, you got to buy like double the stuff that you would... Like double the size or whatever, you know. And that's how Costco is made. In fact, am I right about this, Kathleen? Costco does not make its profit off of basically selling the items. I think they only mark up about 15% or something like that. They make the money off the memberships. Yep. And they don't have to advertise, so they save all kinds of money. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You'll never see a Costco commercial. Well, I mean, you yeah. do get you do get emails think, yeah, from yeah, them and things like that, but you're right. I've never seen a Costco commercial. Yeah, uh, nope. I get the booklet on the mail with the coupons. No. The, the what? Oh, the, yeah, the, the little booklet. book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is BJ's I got right here. Yeah. And their employees are very well paid. Oh, yeah. Uh, Good health care, too. Yep. Everything. Oh, a, mo a, mo everything. a model company. An absolute mm -hmm. model company. Yep. Yeah. Um, how many here? Are Same you bullshit as UPS. I mean, it's, you know, your upper management's, oh, good Lord. I mean, I would say most people on this panel, if I were to just say it out loud, are, have all bought at Costco and all buy on Amazon, right? That's correct. For you me. don't at all? Not Amazon. No. Why? Hate Amazon. Why? I mean, they hire people just to turn them over. We, like, I never buy anything on Amazon. There's nothing on fucking Amazon I want. So my son, he likes DVDs every now and then. And I said, uh-uh, not Amazon, eBay. I sell on eBay. I'm going to support the folks that are selling on eBay. We eBay are not stuff. gonna support Amazon. We're not gonna the do only major buy. item I uh -uh. the only major item I ever bought on eBay broke. Uh, no, same here. Yeah. I've never had any issues. I've oh. bought stuff, sold stuff. I mean I've sold four cars on eBay. 
Yeah. I've bought two cars on eBay, mm-hmm. and I got three packages today from eBay sellers. I yeah. always buy eBay. Really? Yeah. Well, you know. All, All right. right. So we have a couple of people that don't like Amazon. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't love Amazon. I mean, I've got my problems with them. I think the way they treat their employees sucks. Yep. You know, know. Uh, but um, they are a convenience. Yeah. Okay. They Plain are a convenience, but it's slave labor, and I'm not going to support that. When well, you have a contraption I, I, I don't... connected to you, and if you don't go fast enough, you're fired on the spot. Well, haven't they changed? Just, aren't they changing that? Because they've gotten no, a lot of heat. It's for only that. getting worse. It, it's only getting worse. Yeah, I mean, they literally have a quota for how many people they hire well, to then fire. Then let's just hope that rocket blows up next month. Yeah, I could give a shit. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Bezos is going up in his Amazon blue horizon. Amazon is good at giving gifts to people. Hmm. Amazon, I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon, and then I get gifts in the mail that I have not ordered that they think I ought to have, and that way they give you, you get the right thumbs up. <clears throat> this last weekend, I got a bottle of antihistamine. Really? Maybe they think you get Well, here's, here's, what they, here's what they've done, how they've changed, though, that bothers me. It used to be that if I ordered something and it didn't come, or it said it's been delivered and I couldn't find it anywhere on the property. Uh-huh. Uh, I could call them up immediately and say, hey, I didn't get my package. And they go, okay, we'll send you another one out. Boom, mm-hmm. that was it. Good. Now it's, oh, well, wait 24 hours because sometimes they're marked as having been delivered. And then if you oh. didn't get it in 24 hours, I don't want to wait 24 hours. Right. I want it Thank now. You. If they sold it sold it to you through a second party, then you're fucked. Then you're then, then, then you're really fucked. Well, they will give you your money back, but they won't resend you the item. You have to go back online and reorder the item. What was the last thing you got from Amazon, Alex? Well, what I just got was uh, some uh, uh, ice um, um, seltzer uh, mm. uh, that is a case of it that I should have gotten two weeks ago and it didn't come so I called them and told them it didn't come a day later and they sent me a new one and now this one got here today. Okay. Oh, so you got an extra case? Oh yeah, I've had that happen on several occasions. You think I'm calling them and saying, hey, I got it, I'm going to send it back to you? Yeah. My mother would have done that. We got to return this. No, yeah. we don't. <laughs> so, so, so I bought a book and um, I, I ordered it, and then, and then after I ordered it, I looked at it, and the delivery said it was going to be like three weeks. But then on this other vendor, it said it was only going to be like three days. So I canceled the first order, and placed the order with the second second vendor. But but uh, you know the, the um, cost more. No, Am, no Amazon said no. You can't. You you gotta you gotta get the refund fund through the uh, you know the other uh, the supplier. The, yeah. Yeah, because because they said I you know they said it, it I didn't cancel it or something. Yeah, but I canceled it twenty times, but it never canceled. Yeah, I mean I've had I've had problems with them, but I've I've, I've had le- you know what I love about it is I like to see what the cheapest thing is I can order that they have to send me. <laughs> and I actually found something once that they had to send me that only cost me a dollar. It cost them more to ship the goddamn thing. You know, you should do it. You know, I'm on Amazon. I ordered rice. If you order rice roll, it's only a dollar a box. It would cost them more to ship it. What? Rice what? Rice aroni. Because oh, they got aroni? every flavor on Amazon. I'm looking oh, at yeah. him now because I couldn't get the four cheese today. But he's got, see, I know now, Kathleen, he has, the, he has every flavor, though, Bezos. I was looking for the four cheese he's got. He's got every flavor. That's why you go to him. He's got everything. And you married Ooh. this guy, right, Kathleen? I did. <laughs> this is why it's addictive, Alex. You got everything you want. I hate going to the store and you can't find a flavor you want. Yeah. You know, I've had friends ask me, have you ever considered selling on Amazon? And I said, no. I said, uh, you know, they have attorneys that um, all they do is deal with uh, people's accounts getting hijacked by other Amazon sellers. Amazon will dictate to you, you're going to sell it at this price. You're going to charge free shipping. I mean, eBay, I can do whatever I want. 
and I'm all about customer service, and they don't dictate anything to me. Well, but eBay is a yeah, different is, is almost right. is is a different kind of company. You're your own boss. I mean, in company. in the case yes. of Amazon, it's really an aggregator of all these products and selling it like you were going through a supermarket. Where eBay is people individually selling stuff. Yeah. There's people okay. who individually sell on Amazon. Well, no, that's yeah, a yeah, secondary yeah, business at Amazon, are, but it yeah. isn't the main one. Yes, Jack, you had your hand up. It, I gotta go, but I have a buddy that I was talking to this afternoon. He's been an eBay seller for 13, 14 years. This morning, he told me, and I may have to quit doing this and get into his racket. He sells certain items on eBay. He specializes in them. And this morning, his sales from yesterday, $1,250. Oh, every day. He, he, he averages, he says, about 75 bucks a day. He's retired. He lives in a paid-for yeah. home. And I'm asking, why am I staying up this late? Well, wait a minute. He made 1200 bucks, but that wasn't pr pure profit. That was oh, almost pure profit because of the really? items he sells. What does he sell? He discovered a market for... Uh, that rocks. No, almost as good. Uh, he discovered, thank you, I needed the time to think about what it was. He dis he sells items that go into microscopes. And he buys used microscopes, takes them apart, and sells this part that is wanted by high schools and junior high schools for their microscopes. That, and he sells them wow. you know, cheaper than they can get them anywhere else. Okay. Hey, I know you got to go do your show, so I'm going to let you go. Okay. Well, I expect to hear from you and give me a grade later because we may have a pop quiz next week, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Alex. Okay, good night, Jack. Uh, by the way, uh, we should tonight ask, uh, ask Trucker Steve where he is located. In fact, everybody, try and take a guess. How long have uh -huh. you been out on the road this time, Trucker Steve? He's for a couple of days now. A couple of days, Okay. I'm thinking he's somewhere around, I don't know, Ohio? How about anybody else have a guess? California. Iowa? Where? California. California? I don't think he's that far. Two days? Wow. I think Washington, up by Seattle. Up around Seattle. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Where the hell are you? <laughs> Where are you? In Nebraska. Where? In Nebraska, on my way to Sparks. On your way to Sparks. Okay, so uh, uh, you're you're in you were in Indiana, you say? No, oh, Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska. 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 So yeah. I was uh, Ohio. I was kind of close, wasn't I? Uh, so you're hmm. You're right on eighty, I'll bet. Yeah, eighty. Eighty, and you're on your way to Sparks, Nevada. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Sydney's a couple hours. Uh, uh, east of uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Sparks is right outside Reno, right? It's it's the next city over from Reno, right? Uh, well, Sparks is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I, I'm assuming when you're on the show, you turn the truck on cruise control. No, and he, it just gets you there. No, he's required <laughs> to take a certain amount of rest, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's basically what he's doing this evening. He is Maybe Alex. Rocky. Does Rocky drive the truck sometimes? <laughs> no, no. Is it hot there in Nebraska? Huh? Is it hot in Nebraska right now? It was uh, 46 Celsius, which is pretty fucking high. Uh, 46? 37 is 100 degrees. Wow. 46 Celsius, so... Whatever that is in Fahrenheit, it's pretty fucking hot. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I take it so. easy. Have yeah. a good, uh, good rest of your uh, of your tour, as it were. And uh, uh, thank you, Alan, and thank you to uh, Charlie as well. Ah, Shmoody, always love to see your lovely and attractive face uh, there. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't care if you're married to Tony or not. I intend to steal you from her. Uh, uh, John Larkin, thank you, Whoa. thank you, Mr. Mr. Schmoody, and uh, thank you, of course, uh, Trucker Steve. All of you, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? 
And I will be a give a, a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. Let me just uh, get rid of them here. Jack Bishop is next with the uh, intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype. And that will be at GabNet Live. That's the uh, thing you kind of dial up on Skype. We'll see you again when? I guess tomorrow night, huh? Friday night, last night of the week. We'll be right here. A little bit of a shorter interview at the beginning of the show so these people can have all the time to themselves. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, same time, same station in life, 10.30. And uh, as always, uh, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, if you haven't done it, get vaccinated. If not, wear a mask. And if you haven't done any of those things, eh, fuck you. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>